Hello everyone and welcome to Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 The Sith Lords. This is going to be my very first blind playthrough of the game after recently completing the first Knights of the Old Republic and it was so much fun to go to a new era of Star Wars for the very first time. One that I had, you know, heard about how popular it is, how loved that era of Star Wars is and I can totally totally see why. Bioware's Knights of the Old Republic was certainly a really fun and cool experience where we got to see original characters uh, that have consistently been popular enough to span media to this day. Like we've got a game from 2003 that gave us Revan and Malak and these and these amazing characters like Bastila in our, in our crew and HK47, all of that and they are still, to this day, spoken so highly of and beloved Star Wars characters. And I think that speaks volumes for the quality of content that come from the era of the Old Republic. And we're going to jump into the, the sequel and we're going to run off just some useful information before we get into it that obviously as you can see by the title screen we are playing the restored content modification that has been the most highly requested and mentioned uh version of this game to play so what i am sort of knowledgeable of in knights of the old republic 2 is this game was made by obsidian which is awesome because i love fallout new vegas a lot uh so it, there was a developer switch so Obsidian have done this game and it came out, I think a year later, like they pushed this game out in 2004. Uh, so this game came out a year after the first one, which is crazy. Uh, and I believe due to that, there was some cut content or stuff that was unfinished that was then polished up for the restored content modification. I don't know what it is. I don't know the differences, obviously, because I'm going into this blind. So I will be reacting to... I'll be taking everything at face value. I'm not going to try and be like, oh, I wonder if this was added. I wonder if this was added. I mean, maybe I might make a comment on it, but I'm not going to like focus on it. I'm just going to take the experience as it comes uh, with the restored content mod. And usually I wouldn't do... I, I don't think I would do a let's play like this usually, but it seems to be one that is so highly regarded and requested as like the the way to play that I will give this one a shot uh, and, and do it this way. Uh, so it'll be a little bit different from a first time playthrough for people who probably picked it up when the game first came out sort of thing. But we'll see how we go. Uh, I will state uh, that I actually know who the character on the main menu is. Uh, that's Darth Sion. And the reason why I know that is because he's a costume in The Force Unleashed. So I'll be honest with you, I know who that is. <laughs> uh, I did this at the start of Knights of the Old Republic 1 as well. I was like, look, I know that there is a character called Darth Revan. Because how could you not? You know what he looks like. He's, he's cool looking. Everyone loves him. What I didn't know is, you know, obviously that I was playing as him through the whole game. And that was still such a cool twist. Like, I knew about the legend of Darth Revan. But I didn't know that I was Revan. And I kind of feel like that's, like, perfectly poetic because that's how the game works. You know about Darth Revan because he's like this legendary Jedi turned Sith and we don't know why and what happened and he's just like this renowned character and then we get that reveal and I just think that's so cool. But I, I knew, uh, like I know some Darth characters names because, you know, being such a huge Star Wars fan, that kind of stuff does like leak in a little bit. But like what's good is I don't know characters i don't know story i don't know anything like that but i am being like straight up and honest that it's like i know that this guy's uh darth scion i also know that there's a character and i think he's on the he's on the cover as well is darth nihilus i think his name is uh so i just know their names but i don't know what they're about you know what i mean uh, i don't know what the, their deal is i also am not i i believe this game is not connected or like a straight sequel in the sense of of that we're playing with the same cast of characters. I, I don't think so. Uh, so I believe that when we make our character, I'm obviously not gonna be making my character with the intention that I am gonna be my character from uh, the previous game. And I think that kind of covers everything. Uh, that's 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 gonna be it. So I, I'm aware that there's some characters that are called Darth Sion, Darth Nihilus. Uh, it's made by Obsidian. We're playing with the restored content mod. 
I don't know anything else. I'm just trying to see if there's anything that I can think of going into it, but I think I think that's it. So without further ado, let's start a new game of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, The Sith Lords. I'm very excited. So let's start a new game. Character generation. We'll choose our class. So we've got our... Ah, cool. So our character creation, they're all Jedi classes. So instead of like the scoundrel, the scout, it's straight up, you are Jedi straight away. Okay. Jedi Consular, Jedi Sentinel, and Jedi Guardian. Okay, so those are the three classes from the first game that you could choose. I believe we were a Sentinel in um, KOTOR 1. Jedi Consulars are Masters of the Force and spend less time on combat training. Recommended for advanced players only. Jedi Sentinels are well balanced and possess many skills. And Jedi Guardians focus on combat training and lightsaber mastery. Okay, cool. So you can focus on using the Force, you can focus on your lightsaber mastery, or you can be a well balanced mix of the two. The force powers, uh, the force powers in the first game were actually so much fun to once you like really started getting into them for sure. So it almost makes me want to, it almost makes me want to try and do a Jedi Consular, which would be cool. Less time in combat training though. I don't know. I'm kind of like, I'm kind of attracted to having a balance between both. I think I'll commit, I'm going to commit to continuing to being a, a sentinel, to, to balance both, to balance both. Let's make our character. Okay, so, portrait. Ha! Huh, they got the same character model. We can bring Revan back, guys. Soul Patch Revan. Just a bit of Candorous in there. Ooh! Hello there. Nice, okay. These faces look great, dude. These faces actually look really nice. 2004, not bad. Okay, I think I've already chosen, as soon as you see him, the rugged, handsome gentleman. Hello there. It's Jesus! Um, attributes. The attributes of your character apply bonus or penalties to everything from combat to skill checks to force powers. So, hopefully I will make my character a little bit better than we did the first time. I was very new to that. Dungeons and Dragons style dynamic in a video game. Not necessarily new to creating a character with a Dungeons and Dragons style, but I hadn't done that for the first time, which was really cool. Um, something that I was aware of in the first game, partway through the playthrough that got mentioned, was um, the way that lightsaber combat works um, is it scales based on your strength or your dexterity, whichever is highest, uh, which was cool. I didn't realize that uh, until it was mentioned partway through the playthrough. Uh, so I think, um, I, I would assume it's the same. So strength measures physical power, high strength adds modifiers to melee damage and a chance to hit by Brabade's lightsabers. And this talks about blasters still. I think if we're gonna focus on having some nice force powers, but also with some combat. I think we want to put our, I'll put our dexterity, like 12. Uh, I want to have force powers, so I want to put that up there. We need charisma, because we need good persuasion. So that's another one that I want to put up as well. I want to specialize in one of the stats primarily, and then have everything else kind of a little bit balanced, but we'll see. Uh, intelligence represents knowledge and reasoning. Number of points I have to spend on skills. And then we need constitution, so I don't get wrecked. Alright, I've still got 14 points left. Uh, I'm going to put wisdom up to a plus two. Dexterity up to a plus two. So 14 in those. I'm going to make that 10, so it at least doesn't have a negative modifier. I might max, I might put that at 16. So we're gonna have good force points and force power saving throughs. Uh, and then I think I'm gonna make myself more charismatic. So we'll do, we'll, we'll have 16 wisdom, 14 charisma, 10 on intelligence, 
12 constitution, 14 dexterity, and 10 strength. You know what, maybe I should... Maybe I should take that down and do that. So I won't, because I'm going to focus on being dexterous. I'll keep strength down, and then I at least get a plus one to intelligence for more points. And then I can always increase strength later when we can increase attributes. I think that's what I'm going to roll with. Good force points, good charisma, and then this is good as well. Alright, I'm going to go with, I'm going to commit with that. Skills! Alright, let's have a look. Character generation skills. Okay, so we've got our class skill. Uh, right, and then the cross class skill. Okay, so repair is a cross class skill. Hmm. Interesting. So if I change to a different class, is it possible to get our most important ones all as a class skill? Like these three are the big ones. At least we have Persuade and Security. We have 16 remaining points. I hope there's not a situation in this game that needs me to repair a droid to restore their memory. <laughs> and I need to have my report repair points up. Uh, we're gonna put... Uh, okay, so we put a maximum of 4 in. Security. How many can we put in cross-class? Less. I'll put 2 in. And then... I'm assuming it should be similar to the first game where we would have characters that specialize in different areas. So I think I'll give myself the ability to... I'll put two in Treat Injury and two in Awareness. That's what I'll go for. So we've got some Awareness, got some Treating Injury, Max Persuade, Security, and, I get, and we'll put Repair up. Now we've got our Feats. There we go. Some feats allow you to use special items like heavy armor. Modify saving throws and skill checks during the game. Okay, we've been granted light armor proficiency, critical strike, flurry, power attack, and all our blasts, weapon proficiencies with all of our things, Jedi defense, force immunity, Jedi sense, war veteran. Okay. Alright, let's have a look at our list. So we've got... Two weapon fighting, so this is kind of what we're used to seeing from the first game. Caution, Empathy, Gearhead, Conditioning. Okay, we've seen all of these before, so we can do our focuses on the lightsaber combat. Toughness, and then Dueling, a single one-handed weapons. I think we've got new ones. Regenerate Force Points, Close Combat, Class Skill, Demolitions. Oh, hang on. Repair is a cross-class skill. This feat gives a character advanced training. Ah, oh, so it can no longer be considered cross-class. can be purchased for one skill point per skill level. Nice. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay, so we can make other skills an actual one. Dual Strike. The character has advanced training using teamwork to defeat enemies. When attacking an enemy that another party member is also attacking, two plus bonus to hit. That's cool. Finesse lightsabers. The character has mastered using grace and speed with lightsabers instead of raw power. The character can add either their... Oh, hang on. Character can add either their dexterity or strength bonus to their chance to hit, whichever is higher. Oh, they've changed it in this game, so it's a finesse. Okay. Well, we're going to have to pick that because we just made ourselves dexterous. <laughs> okay. So they have changed it and made it an actual feat. Uh, mobility, increased reaction time and speed, regenerate vitality points, stealth run, that will be nice, precise shot one, precise shot four, okay, cool. Uh, I guess I'm going to just go for, because we only have one feat to get, I'll get the finesse with lightsabers, because we kind of need that, uh, considering my dexterity over my strength, so we'll go, we'll go for that, that's nice. Uh, now I have to come up with a character name. Ooh, random names, nice. Um, I have to come up with a, a new name, and it's interesting because I said this at the beginning of Knights of the Old Republic 1, that like my Star Wars name that I gave myself is like a variation of my first name, which was Cress, and then I just picked a last name, Dracor. But I can't do that anymore because that, that's the identity of Revan. 
unless I change my I, the, the lore of Chris Draco, right? Is Chris Draco was actually a legendary Jedi <laughs> who already existed, and my identity was stolen in Knights of the Old Republic One. Uh, I don't know. We gotta I gotta come up with a with a name. I gotta think I gotta think on the name. So we'll we'll see. Let me let me think because I take forever to choose a name when I haven't already premeditated. So I probably should have premeditated, and I haven't. Uh, so I'm going to think on a name, and then I will get back to you. Okay, after much determination and deliberation, I have messed around with variations of names and almost landed on a few. I was almost going to be funny and give myself a last name that was sounded just similar to Dracor without it being Dracor. Chris Jacor. <laughs> uh, but we're going with we're going with a variation on Chris still. Uh, this is an actual Star Wars surname. Uh, spelling. There's a character in the High Republic called Avar Chris, uh, and it's spelt like that way. So I was like, okay, that's Star Warsy. That uh, it fits. And then uh, I'm using inspiration from another game that I'm playing at the moment. Uh, and if you know, you know. And it's actually Welsh, and it's pronounced Blythe, and it's Welsh for wolf. So technically, if you wanted to translate it, it'd be Chris Wolf, but. It's going to be the full name is going to be Chris Blythe. Is how it's how it's pronounced. So you might be seeing those D's and going what? But it's it's cool. I like it. Dave Filoni would be proud. Chris Blythe is my character's name, and we're ready to play. So Chris Blythe, the Jedi Sentinel. That's our character screen. Let's jump in. Let's play Knights of the Old Republic two. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and for some reason, the movie was not on there. That was weird. Okay, it didn't want to show you the cutscene. No title crawl! The title crawl glitched. Evan Hawk is adrift in space after a terrible battle. Most of its crew are dead or dying. You lie in the medical room what? in critical condition. You won't survive long without medical attention. The hyperdrive is damaged. Main power must be restored in order to bring the engines online and dock with the nearby Paragus mining station for much needed repairs. Your fate, and that of the Evan Hawk, depend upon T3M4, a lone astromech droid. Return to this location at any time to skip the prologue. Wait! T3! And we're on the Evan Hawk still, but there's new people on it. What the hell? Okay, that's interesting. Um, continue the prologue, yeah. Press um, W A S D to move. M4, then turn. Press caps lock to toggle first person free look. Hold control to look about. Nice. Uh, this will be my first time playing the game on PC as well, by the way. Because we played the, uh, the first game on Xbox, because getting the first game to run on PC is terrible. And it was, and it was fine. Uh, but we are obviously doesn't need to be said we're playing the restored content mod this is obviously pc it's widescreen it's much easier to actually operate unfortunately i had a massive headache trying to get this game to run full screen and to capture an obs properly it, the game just really doesn't want it to work it's really unfortunate so i've had to do uh i've had to do window capture and uh, I've had to extend it a little bit out, so you might see that there's subtle bits of the UI being cut off on the edges. Uh, that's unfortunate, but it's the way that I can get it to fill the screen up. So I can see everything for me, but there's a little bit cut off uh, in the actual uh, recording. So I do apologize for that. It's kind of, I need to get have the game running in windowed mode to get it to work. Now we're on the Ebon Hawk and we're playing as T3 which is so bizarre. Uh, the icons at the top right of the screen give you access to the menu, so this is just our menu. What I'm gonna do, um, what I'm gonna do is I wanna 
get the opening crawl. For some reason the game glitched, it wouldn't even show the screen of a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, and then it just cut to this. So before we proceed any further, a unique part of Star Wars is getting the opening crawl. So I'm just going to quickly see if we can get the opening crawl up. Uh, I'm going to save our game in a new slot here. Uh, number one. Uh, we'll save the game uh, and we'll try and see if I can just get the opening crawl uh, and then we'll continue with the prologue where we're on the Ebon Hawk playing as T3. That's so weird. Okay, so what I've had to do and had to figure out behind the scenes to get this to work is apparently what happens is Knights of the Old Republic 2, when playing a cutscene, opens a separate window. So it opens up a Star Wars movie player window instead of it playing within the game itself. So with OBS, it's a problem because obviously the OBS is recording a specific window and then when it opens a different one, it's not going to show up. So what I've had to do is do it this way. So I've got a new window that should pop up and record whenever a cutscene plays. So I was able to get it working. So thank you for, you know, bearing with some technical difficulties that we're going to have to do uh, and figure out as we go along. Hopefully it's a pretty smooth experience, but what I've just had to quickly do is we'll just create a new character real quick. Uh, just a quick character to press play on the opening cutscene, and naturally, because it's the Star Wars title screen music, I have to mute that one. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get the cutscene with the title crawl so I can read the title crawl and then we can go back to our original save. And then from then on, when cutscenes play, it should be okay. Let's find out. So, let's start it up. Here we go. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Star Wars. There it is. Okay, so it shows up. It shows up. We have movie. The Sith Lords. So it doesn't even say Knights of the Old Republic, just the Sith Lords. It is a perilous time for the galaxy. A brutal civil war has all but destroyed the Jedi Order, leaving the ailing Republic on the verge of collapse. Amid the turmoil, the evil Sith have spread across the galaxy, hunting down and destroying the remaining Jedi Knights. Narrowly escaping a deadly Sith ambush, the last known Jedi clings to life aboard a battered freighter near the ravaged world of Paragus, I think it was said. The ravaged world of Paragus. That's a cool opening crawl. That's a, that's a very Star Wars-y opening crawl. We've got the Sith hunting down and destroying the Jedi Knights. Interesting. So... That's a nice premise, isn't it? The Jedi are all but extinct. You, my friend, are all that's left of their religion. Cool. Okay. Let's see how it starts. So we've got our pan down. Damn, and it really is just the Ebon Hawk floating through space. And it's and it's damaged. Nice. So it doesn't reveal that it's the Ebon Hawk until you're on it. Cool. All right, now I need to get back to my actual save game. Okay, with that, with that being said and done, we are finally where we need to be. We're in the cockpit of the Ebon Hawk, and it's a disaster. We've been, we're floating. Uh, we are floating in space towards. Uh, what looks like a, you know, I think it's the the moon uh, that's like Paragus, I think it was. So we've got our galaxy map. We can this click on that. Galaxy map. It shows you are near Paragus. Paragus, a mining colony. When the hyperdrive is fixed, you can use the galaxy map to choose a destination planet. Nice. Okay. There's our galaxy map. Oh, we're on like the edge of the galaxy. Nice. It's cool to see that it's like visually very, very similar to the first game. Uh, so let's have a look. We, we need to start off slow and take everything in that's that might be new or different. So we're in the prologue, apparently. Uh, so we're in the medical bay and we're not feeling so hot, but T3 to the rescue. We love it. T3 is actually going to have a character 
in in this one instead of his uh, beep boops. We start off as T3, beloved droid. Uh, party inventory. So we can actually filter. Oh, you can filter data pads. That's awesome. Weapons, armor, usable quests, and miscellaneous. I feel like this is going to be so much smoother, uh, at least from a like UI perspective, uh, to play on PC than uh, controller. So I'm excited for that. Uh, this is the same. So we've got our light and dark meter, our status screen. Uh, this is our skills and feats. So the abilities page and our feats. Nice. Uh, the party selection screen. Okay, we have... Nice, we have 10 characters. 10 party members in this one. That's cool. Uh, quests. And our map screen is our beloved Ebon Hawk. And our settings, nice. So in the quests, you can actually sort it by name and planet. That's cool, in time. I like that a lot. Okay, menu screen looking good. Um, we have this, which is aggressive. Characters using the aggressive behavior will attack any enemies they see, regardless of their distance from the character you are controlling. They will use whatever weapon they have equipped. You can have multiple powers or items in each icon of the action menu. Scroll up and down using the mouse wheel to cycle through various options. Characters using the grenadier behavior will attack any enemies they see, but will also use grenades against clusters of enemies. Only non-Jedi can use this behavior. Uh, we've also got grenadier. Stationary will attack any enemies within range, but will not move during combat. Ranged behavior will attack any enemies they see, but stay within 10 meters of the character you're controlling. Use ranged weapons, but if attacked in melee, they will switch until they are no longer threatened. That one seems nice. Uh, aggressive, stationary. Yeah, I think range seems to be the nicest one there. Range seems nice. Uh, okay, active quest screen includes important information related to your ongoing adventures. Refer to this journal for hints and guidance throughout the game. Journal entry added. To view your quests, open the game menu, default, escape, and look in the journal. Okay, I can just press J for journal. Okay, prologue. Save the Ebon Hawk. The Ebon Hawk is heavily damaged and adrift in a dangerous asteroid field. Find the hyperdrive and fix it to restore primary power so that you can dock with the Paragus mining station for repairs. And Chris Blythe is lying in the med bay in critical condition. You can use a med back uh, to stabilize his vitals. To fully revive Chris will require the medical facilities at the Paragus mining station. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm getting used to keyboard and mouse movement in... This is so cool. Alright, I'm gonna get used to keyboard and mouse movement in, in this game instead, but it feels relatively smooth, which is nice. Communications console. This room actually has a use now, guys. <laughs> this was just such an empty room in the first game. Uh, Ebon Hawk communications console, damaged, minimal functionality. Click your left mouse button to continue. In order to use this console, you will need a computer spike. Slice the system, baby. I'll just press one. Uh, open the main hold containment door. Yes. Open the main hold. Wonderful. Alright, so... Game... Crashed again, but that's okay. Uh, cause I got it back and then I took this opportunity while I was setting it back up to change the color of my, of my webcam thing to match the, the color of the user interface. So it's a bit more integrated now instead of being blue like the last game. Uh, so we're now f fine. <laughs> We're now fine. Let's let's see. Okay. We're in the main hold. Uh, security console. Let's have a look. Uh, we need two spikes. We do not have any, so we will have to log out. Okay. Uh, we got a foot locker that we can bash or use security on. Let's open that bad boy up. Oh damn it! However, you can use your weapon to bash it open. 
Click on the bash icon or press 1. Bash it open. Some locked doors and containers can be opened by bashing or blasting them. Get it, T3. Bash that door open. Alright, press spacebar to continue. So we've still got the same thing where it pauses at the end of a combat round. Which is nice. Nice. What did I get? Broken item in. Haha. <laughs> Two computer spikes. Okay, get Sometimes items. Bashing or blowing open the container will break some of the items in the container. Ah. But you can use even broken items. They can be turned into useful components at a workbench. Okay. So I busted the items up because I bashed it. Exploring the Evan Hawk. Press the map screen. Access the map screen by pressing M. Open the blast door. This blast door is magnetically sealed and cannot be opened. Can't open the blast door. Uh, low security door. Apparently my computer skills trash though, right? I mean my security skill. Oh, it's fine enough for this one. <gasps> There's another droid! 3 CFD! This is the cargo hold. There's another one! Talking to other characters is much like using the computer console in the cockpit. Scroll through your response options or move the mouse cursor, and then click to select a response. Note that some responses may influence how other characters react to you, so choose carefully. Furthermore, certain skills, powers, and attributes may modify what choices you have, or how successful you are with those choices. Nice. 3CFD is malfunctioning. You can fix him by using a part. Search the ship to find one. If you repair 3CFD, he can join your party and assist you in repairing the ship. Okay, so T3 and 3C. Alright. Metal box. Can we open this bad boy? Combat training. Field survival pistol. Oh god. Sensor droids emerged from this box when you opened it. Combat These time. This will make for excellent target practice. Use the weapon from this container to attack the droids. Gotcha. Okay, so inventory. Um, field survival pistol. Uh... Okay, I guess it goes on this side? Left clicking on a slot equips the thing. Okay, there you go. Alright, so... I gotta get used to a new invent- like a, a new equip menu, but it looks like I've got my blaster. Can equip a weapon. The game pauses when you sight an enemy. Selection reticle will show up in red. Use the mouse to select other hostile targets. Nice. Okay, spot an enemy, left click. Makes sense. It's it's pretty much the same as the last game, so only left click target enemy once to engage, automatically attack each round, don't have to left click it again. Target action menus to activate items. Okay. Change Get him T3. Okay, it's just gonna cut out the dialogue. Get him T T3. I believe in you. There you go. Just messing around a little bit. Perfect. You got it, baby. Good work. Defeating the sensor Good work. To continue combat training, open the metal box again, and more sensor droids will appear. They've updated it so your boxes actually say that they're empty when you loot them. Thank God. The lock on this container is too difficult to open. You'll need to use a security tunneler to help open the lock. Look in the unlocked cylinder next to this one to find security tunnel. If you encounter and parts. a difficult lock on a Okay, security tunneler. Nice. Maybe I could have used that on that box instead of bashing it. Parts, components, and a computer spike. Nice. Okay. So high security clearance is done. I've got parts. Can I repair this bad boy now? 3 CFD is malfunctioning. You can fix him by using a part. Luckily. You have already found one. Yes, I have. If you repair 3CFD, he can join your party and assist you in repairing the ship. Uh, one part. Repair this bad boy. Success. You have fixed 3CFD. Now he will join your party. Nice. Invite 3CFD. Deep, deep, tree deep. Deep, deep, deep. <laughs> 
Journal entry added. Nice. Okay. Uh, does that go... Do we have a... Completed quests log? I don't think we have one. Active... There we go. Completed quests. Repair 3 CFT bonus mission. You've repaired 3 CFT and invited him to join your party. Click on the portrait by switching them or by pressing tab. Okay, so we can switch active quests and completed quests. Is now a member of your party. To change which party member you control, click on the portrait or press tab. Later, when you have more companions, you can add and remove party members from the party screen in the game menu. Just two droids and we're having a good time. Okay, so security on this locker. This container is locked and requires a key. Why is a key? Search the ship to find the key to this locker. Okay. This is a good tutorial uh, segment, especially if maybe you haven't played the first game and you need like a refresher, like it's going through the motions in a really nice way. And I like that it's integrated with the beginning of the story. So that's cool. I'm assuming all these, do these doors will be closed and I need to open them. This is the garage. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. This lift will take you to the outer hull of the Ebon Hawk, where you will find many parts and mines to use for accessing and repairing the hyperdrive. Oh. Use the lift controls to go up. There's a new section of the Ebon Hawk. We go to the outer hull. Cool. Uh, low security door. While some doors can be bashed open or cut open with a lightsaber or cutting tool, some doors require the use of the security skill to open. Nice. Oh, that's me. From the action bar to open this door. I'll do that last uh, while I, while we walk around because that's like kind of the primary objective. Oh, it's a gonk droid. Oh my god, gonky. Oh, we got parts. Steal parts from your broken gonk droid to repair him. I guess. <laughs> um, let's see. I, th I think I've got spikes now. I've got three. Uh, slice this system. Oh, hang on, I pressed two by accident. It's, it's, I'm hearing a knocking as well, what the hell? You have sliced into the Ebon Hawk security system for the port aft section of the ship. Yeah, I'm hearing some knocking on a door. Access security cameras, there we go. Outer garage door. Cool. Um, into inner garage door. Engine room. Utility lift. Okay, security doors. Outer garage door. Oh, we can close doors now. Let's open that one. We want to open everything. Uh, open inner garage door. Command failed. Hull breach detected. Opening inner garage door will depressurize critical areas. So to open inner garage door, close outer garage door. Okay. Nice. Alright. Display security door status. Hull breach and garage section blast doors locked down. Low security door remote operation offline. Engine room door inoperable. Garage door working. Um, okay. And we've already checked the security cameras. Okay. Journal entry added. Garage access bonus mission. The garage is depressurized and you can only open the inner garage door if you close the outer one and vice versa. To access it, you will need two droids. Switch into solo mode and move the first droid to stand in the hole between the inner and outer doors, then switch. Okay, so... Uh, solo mode is activated this way. There you go, solo mode. So, outer garage door, and then I guess this is the inner garage, wait, engine room, okay, oh, I know what we have to do now, okay, security door, security doors, close inner garage door, open outer garage door, there you go, now log out, switch to you, you go in there, switch to you, Access security doors. Close out a garage door. Open in a garage door. Perfect. You're in, baby. Log out. Switch. We're in. Journal entry added. Dude, that is that's definitely a hull breach. Holy shit. Sparking wires. Sparking wires connect to the trigger mechanism for the inner and outer garage doors. You can open and close the doors from here. Okay, do nothing for now. Holy shit. We just opened a window. Look at that view, baby. Just wanted to see what it was like out there. Okay, so this is this our is workbench. workbench. Because of the damage to the Ebon Hawk, this workbench has limited functionality. Use the workbench to break down the items you've found into components. Nice. Okay, I can use this for T3. Uh, use the workbench. Repair kit. 
Um, component class, total components, nice. Create item. And you can create your security tunneler and stuff like that. Cool. Now, if I go back to UT3 and I go to my inventory, I use my repair kit. Nice, you are now healed. You have healed yourself. Nice. Now... Let's open the blast door. This blast door no. is magnetically sealed and cannot be... Where are we on the map? So, we're in here. Okay, I see. Oh, this is the way out. Nice. This is where you will go to exit the ship. The door is sealed shut, but the uh. magnetic clamps are not engaged. You may be able to override the door's locking mechanism from outside the ship. Oh, like the going up the lift to the outer hull? Okay. This cool. This is the garage. Damn. Cool. Well... Let's get our droid back in here. So that was for the workbench for the repair kit, and there's more that we can do in a bit, I think. So let's close the inner garage door, and then open the outer garage door. Log out, switch. This is the garage. And then let me turn solo mode off so we can actually hang out again. Now, there's a body here. Probably should have checked that. We got a body. Locker key. Oh, there's the locker key. This old woman appears to be dead. Oh. There is a key card on the body that looks like it opens a locker somewhere. This old woman appears to be dead. Okay, so we've got random old woman on the ship. We have broken another broken droid. What happened to the Ebon Hawk between the first game and the second game? T3 is the only. T3 is still here, but uh, our main character is new. We've got another new droid. We've got multiple broken droids. We've got a dead old woman. What the hell happened here? Okay. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we've got sealed blast doors. I guess we'll take this lift up and then we'll go to the outer hull and we'll see what we can do. Okay. And then obviously I'm in there. So in the journal... This is... Ah, uh, hang on. Healing me is a bonus mission. This is the main one. Okay. So, do I have... Oh, maybe I need to craft a med kit on the workbench. Shit. And I don't have one of those yet, do I? I don't think I have the, ab the ability to make one yet. Let's do... You let's, can use this lift. let's go outside. Let's go outside. Oh, I should open the locker. Right. I'll open the locker when we go back down. Ah! It's the Phantom Menace! We got droids on the hull of the ship. This is so cool. Why do we have mines on the top? Look at that! We just got a whole chunk just totally blasted off. That's cool. Uh, open hatch with parts. This open hatch has some parts that will be useful for getting main power restored. Okay, I see. This busted engine port has some needed parts for the Evan Hawks hyperdrive. Take the parts here back down below to get main power restored. Nice. Oh, if we restore main power, then we should be able to... Okay. Exposed, exposed wiring. wires control the door to the starboard dormitory. The door is currently sealed, but you can override it from here. Uh, let's do that. Success. The door is opened. Nice. Okay, so I've opened the door to the dormitory. Get items. Okay, everything is like it's it's going pretty s smoothly. It's I'm still still getting used Don't to it. Don't forget to explore the other. This is the port. The bubbles ahead indicate mines that you've detected automatically with your awareness skill. Nice. Approach mines carefully. Recovering mines requires a higher demolition skill than disabling them. But you get to keep the mine, which you can then use to set as a trap. 
I like that the game tells you about the whole awareness skill with the mine straight away because I didn't realize that until way too late in the original game. Um, okay, so demolition skill for 3C is 6, for T3 it is 10. Hang on, no it isn't. Wait, it's 6 for both droids. Okay, it's 6 for both. Alright, let's try and recover the mine. Can you do it? Nice. Proton Missile. Cover these bad boys. So we just have like a missile just sitting in the fucking... that didn't blow up? <laughs> you can use the explosive device in this missile to blow open the engine room door inside the Ebon Hawk. Oh, nice. This will give you access to the hyperdrive. After you plan to mine, back away quickly so that you do not take damage. What a nice, soft voice for the tutorial lady. She's so kind and welcoming. Quad lasers. He's like, just be careful. Stand away from the door. This is one of the Evan Hawk's quad laser turrets. They are damaged, but you can scavenge some parts from it to use in repairing the Evan Hawk. Dude, being able to walk on the outside, like, go around on the outside of the ship is... It's actually so cool. All right, I think I've scavenged. This is the starboard side of the Ebon Hawk. I think I've scavenged all that I need. I've got a lot of parts. Now we can head down and start doing some shit. Why won't it let me? Like, like you can use you. a slip to take you back inside the. Go inside, please. It's cold out here. Okay. Let's head in here. This is the medical room. Ah, oh, medical storage bin. Nice. I can just heal him in here. Is it gonna be med pack? There you go. Okay. You have found med packs. You can use one to stabilize the condition of the human lying on the bed. Okay. Let's stabilize this human. The med pack can stabilize your condition. Treat injury. Success. You are stabilized. To recover fully, you will require the medical facilities at the Paragus mining station. But you are not in any danger of dying from your wounds right now. Could you imagine if, like, if you ignore him for too long, that our, our character just dies at the beginning of the game, and then we, we messed up? Alright, so the engine room we can blow up. This is the garage door for the workbench that we've already now done. Cargo hold. We opened up the... Oh, we opened up the dormitory. Okay, so I need to do solo mode again. We need to get back. I need to do the the doors. This is the garage. So we can check out the thingy. Open. Close the outer garage door. Inner garage door. Oops. I have so many questions right now that I that I have to wait until we get past the, the prologue segment. Like, what the hell happened? <laughs> What the hell happened? This is the starboard dormitory. Okay. I love that it's just droids that have survived and they're just like, yeah, what the hell happened to you? Let's repair this shit, get this show back on the road. What would we do without droids, honestly? Droid flamethrower, nice. Droid flamethrower. This is one of the special weapons that droids can use. To okay, the equipment you... Uh, Alright, it's on the side, so you can have a flamethrower. Nice, because T3 has the shock arm. By clicking on the blaster icon in the top right area of the screen, or press U. Okay, let's fix this, this hyperdrive. Okay, access security doors and close the inner garage door. Open out a garage door, log out, turn solo mode off. Uh, and now it's time to blast open this bad boy. So put a mine on the door, left clicking the mouse while a mine is selected in your action menu will place a mine. You can disable and recover for later use. Okay. This is the engine room. <laughs> And then, nice, automatic. Cool! Alright, it's open. This is the engine room. Port engine. Port engine is shut down, Fixing the but hyperdrive. appears intact. Fixing the, hy the hyperdrive is suffering badly. You won't be able
unable to make the jump to light speed until it is fully repaired, and you do not have the needed equipment here on the Ebon Hawk. However, you should be able to rig the hyperdrive to restore primary power and bring the port engine online. This will allow you to dock with the Paragus mining station for full repairs. Sounds good. Five parts needed to rig the hyperdrive. Let's Success! Go. The hyperdrive is online. Primary power is restored. Only one step remains. Return to the galaxy map in the cockpit and travel to Paragus. Love the concept and idea of starting off with your ship just being absolutely busted up and in, in, in ruins. It's such a good way to, to start. Okay, so the starboard engine is badly damaged, damage. but the port engine, the port engine is powered, is powered up. up. Cool. You can now use the galaxy map to travel to the Paragus mining station. Um, but that, what about the banging on this door? This is the main hole. You can hear a banging noise coming from the door is sealed shut and cannot be opened from the outside. But the door is sealed shut and cannot be opened from the outside. So it can be opened from the inside and then if there's someone in there knocking on the door they just don't know how to? This blast door is magnetically okay. sealed. I don't think there's anywhere else that we can go because it's not letting us like use a mine on the door. Seeing if the mine would like. Okay, it's not blowing up like it did with the other one, so I don't think we can use that. So we'll just recover it. I guess we'll do what the game wants us to do, because the final step is flying away. Okay, we tried the door, it didn't work. For some reason you can't activate the door from the from the console, which is also strange, but that's okay. Just two droids, let's go. Galaxy map. Now plot a course to the Paragus mining station. Okay. Paragus 2. Climate. None. None climate, because it's an asteroid. Let's had a whole chunk of it taken out. There you go. Let's travel. We did it, baby. Nice. What have you done to my baby? The sensors show the door to the storage compartment is being sliced. There is someone, or something, else alive on the Ebon Hawk. There it is. This is the banging on the door. Go check it out, droids. What is happening right now? What the fuck? What just happened? What the fuck? It just cut away. Were we supposed to have seen what happened there? HK walked out of the, the cupboard. Awake. Oh. Dude, the Force Awakens. <laughs> the Force Awakens, the last Jedi. The rise of Chris Blythe. Interesting. Look at our sneakers, man. Oh, lovely fashion sense. We've got our jumpsuit and our red sneaks. Um... What just happened at the end there, with the uh, HK popped out of the HK popped out of the thing? We heard like a droid get destroyed. Okay, I can't see. I was like, did our did our other astromech droid just get like cooked? Hmm, I'm a bit curious as to. I don't know if that was skipped intentionally or not. Alright, we're back in command of Jesus. Nice. Our Colto tank. This is the Colto tank you emerged from. Do you wish to heal yourself? I believe I've already healed, right? But 
Let's do it. Your wounds have been healed. Okay. Leave the tank alone. Dude, he's busting it down in there. Alright, so we've got other dudes in here. However, I'm the only one to actually wake up. Now, active quests. Recent history bonus mission. You have awakened in a medical bay in an unknown facility. The last thing you remember is being a passenger on the Republic capital ship, the Harbinger. You should find out where you are and how you got here. Oh, the last thing I remember is being a passenger on the Republic capital ship, the Harbinger. So I don't even remember being on the Ebon Hawk at all? What the fuck? Immersion in Colto tanks can heal most wounds. If you have lost vitality points during your explosions, return here to the medical bay. Use the empty tank behind you to heal your wounds. Okay, I'm gonna also put you in... Oh, hang on, you've got another one in here. Jedi support? Uh, hang on, what does Jedi support do? Characters using the Jedi behavior will attack any enemies they see, but will also use supporting Jedi powers to heal and augment their companions. Cool, okay, I like that. Hello there. Uh, the morgue door. Have I got a nice security skill? Can I get this one open? No, I cannot. What about this one? This one is already open. Medical bay container. Med packs. Sweet. Lab station. Medical computer. Alright. Uh, medical computer. Access medical logs. Access log. Ooh, three days ago, two days ago, and one day ago. Okay, 253-12. Still examining the survivors of the damaged freighter. Looks like it goes by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Ooh. Only one survivor, placed in the Coltal tank for recovery. The carbon scoring on the vessel suggests it was in a battle, but no indication of who fired on it. Couldn't get much from the Nava computer. I'm surprised the ship was able to make it inside the Paragus asteroid field without the asteroid drift charts. Aside from the lone survivor, we recovered an old woman. No life signs. There was also a protocol droid and a utility droid on board. Sent both down to maintenance while security sorts through the other items on the ship. It looks like the utility droid, a T3 unit, was able to get the ship working enough to get to the colony. We're prepared to- Holy recording ends in static. Okay, so it only mentions one astromech. Which means I think HK busted himself out of the... of the cupboard and just destroyed the other one? For some reason, I don't know why. He's like, "You're not, you're not meant to be in this party," uh, and they're they're both here. But the old woman is a is a mystery. I wish that the arrow was a, a little more synced up to uh, the my options, but at least I can just shortcut it by pressing one, two, and three. So it looks like we've been here for three days. Let's access the next log. Could be a Jedi. But we won't know for sure until we get the transmission back from the Republic. If the survivor is a Jedi, that would account for the recovery rate. But I'm more concerned that a Jedi here may cause trouble. Some of the miners, especially Korta, are already st Another accident today. A detonation in the ventilation tunnels. If the lockdown measures hadn't activated, the whole facility would have been destroyed. Got most of the injured to the Kolto tanks in time, but the rest had to go to the morgue. One of the wounded said a droid caused the accident, but we couldn't get any specifics. Interesting. And then one day ago. Miners about the Jedi. A number of the droids have been acting oddly, and not even memory wipes seem to be fixing the problem. There was a detonation in another one of the fuel vents the droids were working in. We deactivated several of them and moved them down to maintenance, but we're still treating the plasma burns. That cuts us down to almost half shifts, and with the droids malfunctioning, we may not make the Telos shipment for this month. Fortunately, the detonation didn't cause a lockdown. Warning, there has been a fuel detonation in the mining tunnels. Emergency lockdown commencing. All personnel report to quarters and prepare for emergency venting countermeasures. No! If the ventilation systems are malfunctioning, evacuate the medical bay! Everyone evacuate! Oh shit. Telos, that's where, uh, that's where Karth is from. Access main console options. Okay, so something happened a day ago, but something's been happening for the past few days. Weirdly, I think, when we arrived or something like that. Okay, access medical logs, patient life signs. Everyone's dead except us, okay, great. Um, access patient treatment. Treatment, all subjects being treated for severe plasma burns. Last treatment request resulted in death for all subjects except patient three who was reduced to minimal life signs. Oh, last treatment request resulted in death. But we were reduced to minimal life signs. 
Something killed everyone except me. Treat injury. Check the last treatment request. A lethal dose of sedatives were administered to all the tanks, including number three. There's no record of who ordered the treatment. Someone killed the survivors and tried to kill us. We can attempt to track the treatment request, but we need a spike, which we don't have yet. I think I might be able to craft a spike. Okay, medical bay functions. Access medical bay camera. Okay, access the morgue camera. Ooh, someone's in there as well as the old woman. Okay. Unlock door to the morgue. Nice. God, this is... Okay, this is cool. Um, unlock the medical storage room. Apparently I can just do that without a spike. Let's do that. Sweet. Uh, main console options. Access patient treatment. Access medical inventory. A number of medical-based items can be manufactured using the medical workbench next to the terminal. Nice. Okay. Access medical inventory. Oh, yes. Right. Uh, main console options. Wonderful. Okay, let's log out. Medical bay. Okay, let's have a look. Chemicals. 25 chemicals. Many med-based items are based on chemicals. It may be useful to take these chemi chemicals to the medical workbench in the med bay. Turn them into a med pack. Okay, so crafting and stuff. Straightforward. And med packs. Okay. Cool. Lab station. Um, learn about creating items, breaking down items. Let's have a look. Create certain items using chemicals, which can be found, purchased, or obtained by breaking down other items. Uh, what type of items can be created? Generally more complex and valuable items require a higher skill and more chemicals to create. Health-related items. Stimulants, I remember what stimulants are about. Mines. Grenades. Perfect. All right, back to the main menu. Learn about breaking down items. Break down to require chemicals, which we use to create other stuff. Cool. Um, use the lab station now. Okay. Okay, because it's a lab station and not a workbench, I can't make stuff like a computer spike and, and that. Okay. Med pack, advanced med packs, antidotes, reflexes, and stimulants, and then you can just sort it. Gotcha. Cool. Well, we've opened the morgue damage door which we can open. Let's check the morgue first. Corpse. What is the deal with you? This old woman looks dead but there's no sign of what killed her. Look, at this point probably old age. Just the shock of getting attacked on the ship was probably too much for the for the poor old heart. Corpse. Plasma torch. Oh, hello. Welcome back to the land of the living. What's up? Find what you're looking for amongst the dead. Oh, okay. She's back. <laughs> um, your voice, I heard it as I floated in the Colto tank. Oh, she's the one that said, The Force Awakens, okay. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one. Or perhaps you have been trained for such things. Slept too long. You looked dead when I came in. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Colto tank about you. How do you feel? The Colto tank left me a little drained. Who are you? I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, Kreia. as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? I'm gonna have to whip out the old... We're gonna, I haven't done this in a little while. We did this with the first game of uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I'm gonna have to whip out my, uh, my, 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 my trusty notepad so I can actually write down my, my character names. So we've got Kreia. Last thing I remember, I was on board a Republic ship, the Harbinger. What happened to it? Your ship was attacked. 
You were the only survivor. A result of your Jedi training, no doubt. Okay. If you think I'm a Jedi, you're mistaken. What is that? So I, am I unaware that I'm a Jedi? I'm no longer a member of the Jedi Order. Okay. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down. Interesting. The Jedi Order and I have a troubled history. So it would seem. Keep your past and let us focus on the now. Okay. What is this place? I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. The ship we arrived in, the Ebon Hawk, must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. Why do we need to leave? We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons, and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. Okay. Uh, we've got Persuade and Awareness. Are you sure there's nothing else you can tell me about this place? Even as I slept, I felt much unrest here. I saw strange visions, minds colored with fear. Now, everything here feels terribly silent. A last word of caution. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. Okay. I wish we could make the subtitles larger. It's because it's in 1080p, so it makes everything like sm like smaller. And I, I wish it would just keep everything larger, but with increased resolution. So the subtitles are quite small. Well, they, I mean, at least they're there, but they're tiny. Okay, um, we'll see. There's got to be someone left alive around here. I'll go and look for our ship and some weapons. All right, let's go for number one. You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, <laughs> if only for proper first impressions. Thank you for the sass. So many dialogue options. Goddamn, seven choices. Uh, the patients in the med bay were killed by a lethal dose of sedatives. Any idea how it happened? The miners in the med bay were murdered. You will have to travel. Let's do persuade. I do not know. Why did they spare you? Uh, they didn't. I got the same dose, but survived. Indeed, a Jedi trance could protect one from such poisons. In fact, the sedatives may have been intended to keep you unconscious for some time. It would prove lethal to those untrained in such techniques, however. Most curious. Yeah, you seem to know a lot about Jedi techniques. She seems dressed as a Jedi as well, which is the interesting part. So I assume that that is going to be the connection here, because she reached out with the Force. Uh, you seem to know a lot about Jedi techniques. And so do you. <laughs> we could discuss it at length later on. Now we have other concerns, among them finding our new enemy. Just like, as do you. Okay, maybe when I return you'll actually answer my question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we've got another Jolie Bindo on our hands. Someone who never ans answers our questions and, and is an old fool. But we love him. Okay. Um, maybe when I return you'll actually answer my question. I have found that answers come in their own time, not ours. Turn your energy to the matter at hand. If we cannot find a way out of here, the answers will prove useless anyway. Okay. I'll return soon to make sure you're alright. I leave you to the explorations of this place. Here, I will remain and attempt to center myself. Yeah, such a Jedi. Okay, let's have a look. Um, Medical Bay murders. Found records showing that lethal sedative was given. Why did they try to kill us? Met an elderly woman named Kreia, who informed you that she rescued you from the Harbinger. Okay. So Kreia rescued us from the Harbinger. We were the only survival on the vessel, and that it had been attacked. We don't know how we got off the Harbinger, but we ended up on the Ebon Hawk, and then the Ebon Hawk was attacked. Interesting. You need to find the ship that you and Kreia arrived on. You have taken your first steps on the path to the light side. Heroic acts and charitable responses to others will elevate you further, bringing you more in touch with the light side of the Force and its higher mysteries. Cruel or selfish actions will reverse this, causing you to fall to the dark side. That's cool. Oh, yep, she really meditating on the morgue floor. That's good. Uh, so we got a plasma torch. Nice. Plasma torches are common accessories in most construction facilities. While a clumsy weapon in combat, it can cut through sealed doors and containers easier than most blasters. Nice. All right, let's stick that plasma torch on. <laughs> yes, it is my lightsaber while I'm running around in my underwear. 
Yes. What have you found? <laughs> Instantly just fucking, like, jumps up. Shoop. Okay, uh, just the same... The same options, so I'll just say nothing yet. I was just wondering if there might have been bonus dialogue. Okay. Running around with me old plasma torch. Let's get into this bad boy. Any door that can be bashed open can be cut through more easily with a lightsaber or construction tool, such as the plasma torch. Okay. Then select bash. Gotcha. Get this door open. I missed. He missed the door. We're off to a good start. <laughs> Enemy sighted. Nice. Okay. More corpses, more droids. Let's take a look. Hello. Vibro cutter. Nice. Normally a mining tool, a vibro cutter doubles as an effective melee weapon. Melee weapons give an attacker a large bonus to attack against enemies using ranged weapons. Equip the vibro cutter in your other weapon slot, then switch between it and the plasma torch when you need to cut open a container or door. Nice. Uh, I'm just going to quickly turn down the music ever so slightly. Uh, the music is really good. I'm just, it's just drowning me out a little bit. The music is actually very, very nice. So I think we don't put it in this hand because this is dual wielding, but we put it in this hand. We keep it in our same hand and then we can switch between them, uh, which I don't know how. Um, I should have, hang on, message log is separate feedback dialogue feedback combat effects good effects and bad effects okay just trying to see if there was the tutorial stuff that would show up there again um how is it possible for me to switch weapons So we've got the Vibro Cutter equipped. Do I just have to do it this way? There must be a way for me to switch weapons. There must be a hotkey. Uh, I'm just going to press some buttons. Okay, target's inventory is empty. Hover the mouse cursor over a control to see its hotkey. Ooh, hang on. There we go. Hang on. Let me go into here. I can't do it in the menu. Okay, hang on. Hover over the mouse cursor and control to see its hotkey. I can't see it. Ah, oh, switch weapons is right. That's the switch weapons button, and it's with H. There we go. I used my eyeballs. We found it. God, look at the skull on that boy. He got his face burned off. Broken droid. Okay, we've got some droid stuff. All right, good to know that we just press H. Emergency blast door. Emergency lockdown is in effect. Cannot be opened with the plasma torch. Ma manually opened from the other side. Okay. Oh, we've got droids. Okay, damaged mining droid. Critical strike, flurry, power attack. Nice. I like that we've got a mixture of attacks straight off the bat. Let's go for flurry. Left clicking the mouse activates a selected combat feat. Characters available combat feats appear in the first icon of the target menu. Go! Nice. Fuck them up. Go for the next one. Flurry these bad boys. Nice. I love our character. Yeah, literally Old Republic Obi-Wan Kenobi with the, the Jesus. Mining laser, nice. Okay, so we've got a mining laser. Dude, long range. Okay. And the next door? Alright. Oh, look at that dodge! That was sick. Um, let me... So, physical damage 1 to 10... 1 to 7, range of 23 meters. Makeshift blaster. Let's try use the mining laser. I want to see what it's like. Power blast, rapid shot, sniper shot. Power blast. 
Oh, nice. One hit, baby. How much damage does this do? Probably too far away. Let me move in a bit. Uh, get him. Alright, let's just do this again. You got this. I believe in you. Nice. Power Blast is the way. The music is just like cutting in and out. All right, I thought that we could loot the body, but it disappeared. So we're just going room by room right now. So the droids have started rebelling against the, the miners, and then there was like ventilation problems. Someone tried to murder us. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on right now. And we've got a mysterious Jedi woman who rescued us from the Harbinger as well. Security desk. I like a bit of mystery. Ah, oh, you know what I realized that I forgot to do from in the prologue? I forgot to use the locker key to open the, um, I forgot to use the locker key in the prologue. It's fine. Unfortunately, can't have everything. That's my bad. Components, chemicals, and an iron grenade. Yeah, we repaired the ship and then went, I, because they were like, oh, there's nothing left to do. I, f I forgot, totally pea-brained, and forgot that we had a locker key from the old woman. Damn it. Uh, check security records. Paragus safety hollow orientation. Is this thing on? All right, all hands, especially you, Corda, listen up, because I'm not going to say this again. <laughs> the next one of you Juma heads to try and smuggle a blaster, or so help me, any sort of military-grade frag weapons into my facility is going to take a long walk out the airlock. Why? Because in case you forgot, Paragian fuel explodes at high temperatures. That's what blasted that chunk out of Paragus 2 and created this asteroid field. Oh, that's so, so cool. So if I catch any of you with anything other than sonic charges or mining lasers, I'll burn you and your contract. Security out. That's a good hollow orientation. Mining lasers only, you bastards. Accident report logs. And according to one of the miners, it was because one of the sonic charges went off prematurely. And like before, it was one set by a mining droid. The three idiots were grouped so close to the charge, it might as well have been a grenade going off. The blast turned their bones to dust. The blast wrecked the internal components of the droid that set the charge, though, so we can't even dissect it to see what happened. I don't like what's going on here. Ever since that Jedi showed up, things are getting worse. It's not just Corda and his miners, or the fights, but now the droids are acting crazy. If we don't find what's causing this, or who, this facility is going to be space dust by the time the next Telos freighter arrives. Damn. Uh, mining droid maintenance logs. So, you're in maintenance. Then maybe you can tell me what's going on with these droids. Sir, I don't know. It's like their behavior cores are undergoing binary decay, but I can't find the source. This shouldn't be happening. Well, that's reassuring. It isn't happening. So the next time we nearly have a breach in the ventilation tunnels, I could just close my eyes and pretend it's my imagination. <laughs> you better give me some answers. I want to know the damage these droids can do if they start mining us instead of asteroid rock. Sir, these droids aren't combat models. Their mining lasers are weaker and less accurate than blasters. I doubt those droids could even hit one of us. Are you blind? What about the miners in Med Bay? It's sabotage, and it started right after the commander said we weren't going to sell the Jedi to the exchange. So I want you to find out how these droids are being sabotaged. Mm. That'll tell me who's trying to clear a path to get that Jedi off the facility and stop him. In the meantime, make sure the security's armed with all the ion and sonic charges you can find. If those droids start coming after me, I'm going to need more than low-grade mining lasers to take them down. Clear? Yes, sir. Maintenance control out. Idiot. Idiot! <laughs> okay. There was an offer to sell the Jedi to the exchange. Interesting. Uh, administration console maintenance. I installed an override switch to shut down any droids on this level, just in case someone locks me out of the administration console. As added insurance, I tied the override switch into the circuit to the holding cell door. It'll make sure it can only be opened if all droids in the level are shut down. I doubt Corda or any of his men have the skill to pull off something like this. 
But I'm not taking any chances while we're sitting in the middle of this asteroid minefield. Whoever's responsible won't be able to have the droids rescue him after I lock him up. Nothing will cut through that door. He'll be trapped. Okay, interesting. Security storage room inventory. I secured the stealth field generator inside one of the footlockers in the security storage room. If I have the specs right, the interface field should be effective against the droid sensors. All I need to do is equip the belt and some skill with stealth in order to use it. As long as I don't get too close to the droids, they shouldn't detect me. If any more droids start malfunctioning, the belt should buy me enough time to get to the override switch I set up in the communications blister console. I'd rather shut them down than destroy them. I want to find out how these droids are being sabotaged, maybe even turn them against whoever's sabotaging them. Well, I need to get a computer spike so I can try and track this uh, treatment request as well. Alright, return to main f console functions, access remote camera controls, main security office. That's me! Security storage room. That's a bunch of droids. With a bunch of dead bodies. Communications blister. Nice. Holding cells. Oh great, I love- my favorite thing about video games sometimes is you can tell who's gonna end up being a character and who's just an NPC because of how they're dressed and how they're modeled. It, this dude is straight up like I can almost- I can- just by his appearance I just know how he's gonna sound. You know, you just know. <laughs> like he sounds like he's gonna have the voice actor of Karth's son in the first game like just looking at that it's just like it's just like oh that's the voice that i already have for that character is he sounds like the same voice actor who did karth's son you know if you if you know you know uh emergency hatch to the mining tunnels okay we've walked past there and then return to main console okay log out all right we got stuff that we needed from him now i think there's going to be a bunch of droids behind this door Oh no, maybe the next one. Be careful. There is much energy in the room beyond, yet it stems from nothing that lives. Three robots. Kraya, what? Can you not sense them? Reach out. Cast aside your sight. Cast aside what you see, and instead reach out with your perception. Ah, you can feel them. The droids you cannot perceive, but the small oscillations of energy, that you can feel, echoing outwards. She's blind. She's, uh, she ain't got the sight, which is why she can sense this stuff at like a heightened level. With Kriya's help, you've gained the passive, um, pre um, pre God damn. Recognition, precognition. Pre God, it's so hard when you read. You it. Recognition is the word there, but then there's a P in front of it. <laughs> you have gained the passive precognition power. When this power is triggered, you should save your game. Oh, what? When this power is triggered, you should save your game. Oh, because it's going to be like a fight. Okay. Uh, let me save the game real quick then. Let's go. Save game. I guess we'll just. I may as well just overwrite the our existing one. We'll overwrite our existing one. Okay. Uh, it's just a passive power, which means I shouldn't have to equip it, right? Uh, is it a, is it a feat? Has it been added into this list? War veteran. You are a veteran. Ah, oh, this is what this is. There you go. You are a veteran of the Mandalorian Wars. Your battle scars and experience gives you an extra 25 vitality points. Uh, Jedi sense, force immunity, fear, Jedi sense, Jedi defense. I don't think it's been added as a feat. Is it a power? Page list your force powers. Using a force power requires force points. There it is. Um, precognition, universal power. Precognition warns the Jedi whenever they are about to enter extreme danger. These warnings are quite rare. We got Jedi sense, essentially. Okay, open this bad boy up. Hello, everybody! <laughs> Ooh, we have an iron grenade. Let's go. Iron grenade. 
Ah, you hear it. It is faint, but it is there. What is happening? <laughs> I feel strange, like the sedatives are wearing off. It is the force you feel. It has not been so long as for you to forget. Okay. It, it doesn't feel like it did. It feels like it is coming from across a great distance. It's like a sound. It has been almost a decade. It's been almost a decade. Okay, interesting. I'm just going to say, it has been almost a decade I had forgotten. Do not turn away from it. Listen. Feel it echoing within you. Come. I shall guide you down the familiar paths. You will need it if we are to survive and escape this place. Gaining experience will slowly re-establish your connection to the Force. Go to the level-up screen to choose your Force abilities. Nice. So it's been some time... So we're a veteran of the Mandalorian Wars, so I assume it's taking place... Well, if it's been ten years... But then... In, at, during the events of Knights of the Old Republic 1, the Mandalorian Wars, I think, was five years before that. So if it's been ten years... If you say it's been ten years and he's a veteran of the Mandalorian Wars... It might have been... He might have ran away and left the Jedi after the Mandalorian Wars. So it, I think it, if it, this would be 10 years after the Mandalorian Wars, but five years after the main game would be my assumption based on that information. Uh, gaining experience will slowly reestablish your connection to the Force. Okay, nice. Triple kill in one go. Um, let's go to our level up screen, which is somewhere in here. <laughs> Uh, there it is. Level up. All right. Status. You've been granted the following feats. Force sensitive and unarmed specialist one. Okay. So let's level up some skills. We've got four points. Mm, I feel like I'm going to need to make that repair a uh, class skill so I can level that up more. Uh, persuade, security, awareness, uh, and treat injury once more. Okay. Nice. Powers. I can now add powers. We've got light side and dark side powers. And there's a there's a lot of them too. Okay, so we've got healing, which we cannot get yet. We need to be level six. Um force aura. Burst of speed, force valor, force resistance, energy resistance, force barrier. Shields the Jedi in the force. Battle meditation. Dude, battle meditation. Okay. They made that an actual ability. We got Bastila's battle meditation. Plus two to attack, damage, and will saves to all party members. It also increases vitality point regen. 20 seconds. Does not affect droids. Okay. Force body. The characters to use their own health to fuel force powers. Interesting. Um, revitalize. Rekindle life energies of any non-droid fallen ally. Brings the closest fallen ally back to consciousness with 5%. That's cool. So, uh, reviving, affecting mind. That one I'm kind of interested in getting. Because it allows us to do force persuasion. Force deflection, stun, stun droid. Oh man, once we get destroy droid again, that's going to be cool. Um, wound, slow, fear. Oh man. I kind of want some dark side powers, but I have to... Mm, <laughs> I want some dark side powers. <laughs> Maybe I'll... I don't know yet. I haven't... I don't know if I... I feel like we'll we'll probably be good boys and we'll be on the light side, but we'll, we'll see. Dark, the dark side temptation is always there, isn't it? That's how the dark side works. Force push, drain life, force suppression through lightsaber. Drain force. Force scream creates a wave of sound. There's three to eighteen points of sonic damage. God damn. Mind trick. You reckon uh, that's what Palpatine used in Episode Three when he charged towards the the Jedi Masters? Um, he used force scream. Ah, oh, mind trick is an actual ability instead of um. Okay, so there's two. Distracts non-droid target, easier to sneak by them. Okay, so there's a, like, one for dialogue, effect mind, and then there's one for battle, which is actually pretty cool. 
and then healing. There's a really cool collection of force abilities here. I really like it. That's neat. So I think we've got effect mind, persuasive use of the force. There you go. Um, I think for our first force power, for our first force power, I think we'll go for the affecting mind ability. So I'm going to do that. And then accept. Nice. Okay, there's our first level up. Jedi Sentinel level 2. Wonderful. Alright, let's see. We've got a security tunnel. We'll see if we can open this. Nice. Stealth field generator. So there we got the stealth field. Med pack and more iron grenades. So if I want to... Oh, so there's the belt. Gotcha. Enable stealth mode. Camouflage field that hides the user. Opponents must make an awareness check versus the stealth skill of the user or remain unaware of them. Now, our stealth skill, however, I don't think is too high right now. Um, God, I'm, I'm going to need to... There we go. I need to go into skills. Our stealth is literally at zero. We haven't leveled it up yet. So I think the stealth field generator is probably not going to even really work. Uh, also, I'm not seeing it on my list of things, so... I wonder if that's because I'm not even allowed to use it. Because I haven't put any points in stealth. It'll be fine. We'll be strong enough to hopefully take on enemies. Ooh, nice. Okay, now... Mining droid. Hello. Got him. God, I like how they move. It's cool. Now, this is what we could be using the stealth field generator for, but I prefer to get some experience, baby. So we're just gonna do it this way. We've got enough med packs if we need. And it's not like they're really strong. Okay, you can't loot everyone. What is, what is that? Almost got that second shot. Cool. These mining droids don't stand a chance against me. Oh, only one that time. Oh. Alright, this is the sealed door that has the dude behind it. Beyond this door, someone yet lives. Be mindful. His thoughts are difficult to read. Interesting. He's... But you have nothing to fear from this one. And he might yet prove useful. Okay. We'll try and get that door open. He's definitely going to be like our... He definitely looks like the scoundrel type. Let's have a look around first. So we need to get that force field down. Med pack. Another mining droid. Oh, nice. Nice job, Chief. Administration computer. Communications control, emergency lockdown. Enter code to cancel lockdown. Uh, look for the control override switch. Activate the switch. There we go. So, because all of the droids were dealt with. Uh, I wonder if we should have. If we would have had the ability to deactivate any of those droids. There's another path to go down there. Alright, let's let's open this door and 
this is the point of interest for this room, so let's have a chat with this gentleman. Nice outfit. What, you miners change regulation uniform while I've been in here? Oh yeah, should have found myself some clothes, huh? <laughs> Still haven't found myself some clothes yet. Alright, different voice to what I was expecting. It's a, it's a lower, more gruff voice. It's like a Han Solo voice. Who are you? You got a name or just a big mouth? Atten. Atten Rand. Atten Rand. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. The field only causes mild electrical burns. <laughs> okay. Get to explain why you're locked up? Security claimed I violated some trumped up regulation or another. Take it up with them if you want. But they stopped listening to me shortly before they stopped feeding me. Now that's criminal. Um, what is this place? Oh, you mean you didn't come here on purpose? I'm shocked. I really am. This slice of paradise is the Paragus Mining Facility. The only supplier of shipping grade engine fuel to this corner of the galaxy. Paragus fuel plays havoc with engines, but it gets the job done. As long as you don't mind the toxic byproducts and trying to mine it without blowing yourself up. Okay, this facility doesn't sound too safe. Yeah, this asteroid belt is one giant minefield. One proton torpedo, even a stray blaster shot, can start an explosion that'll make the one that shattered Paragus 2 look like a kid's pop detonator. Paragus 2? You know the planet with the exposed core you saw flying in? That hole was caused by the first mining station that tried to siphon fuel off the planet. Blew a whole chunk out of the planet and set it drifting out here in a big clump of fuel-cooled asteroids. So the miners drill the asteroids now, not the planet's surface. That's why they don't allow blasters here. Can't trust a miner jumped up on Juma Juice not to fire one stray shot that'll turn the entire colony into a thermal detonator. Damn. This facility's deserted. What happened? You mean before or after that Jedi showed up? Either way, it's a real short story. You see, this Jedi shows up, and you know what that means. Where there's one Jedi, the Republic will soon be crawling up your ion engine in no time. But the story gets better. See, some of the miners get it into their ferrocrete skulls that since the Jedi's unconscious, they can collect the bounty the exchange has posted for live Jedi. Well, what passes for the law here didn't like that idea. So the two groups started fighting. Then there was some big explosion, and then I was sitting here for a long time, waiting for some half-naked miner to show up and ask a bunch of questions. <laughs> There's a bounty on captured Jedi, why? Don't know much about it. Maybe the Exchange wants one as a trophy, or somebody's got something against Jedi and is looking to collect. Not many Jedi left. Wouldn't surprise me if the bounty's pretty high. Not many Jedi left? What happened to them? The ones that weren't killed in the Jedi Civil War ended up switching off the lightsabers long ago. Word is there's not even a Jedi Council anymore, but who knows. Wow. I had heard rumors of a war, but a war between Jedi? The stories I heard were of the Sith, not the Jedi. Was it caused by the Mandalorian Wars? Ah, I love all of these questions. I'm gonna do number two. The stories I heard were of the Sith, not the Jedi. Yeah, Revan, Malak, and the Jedi that went to join them in the Mandalorian Wars. They turned against the other Jedi and had a scrap that almost laid waste to the galaxy. <laughs> Where have you been? Interesting. Okay, so we've been a character that's just like been very far removed from the rest. I've been away since the Mandalorian Wars, yeah. Oh, and then they ask the questions. What happened between Revan and Malak? I couldn't care less. That's cool. Um, what happened between Revan and Malak? Well, I wasn't there, but like all Sith, Revan and Malak turned on each other. After they turned on the Jedi, of course. The rumors I heard said Revan defeated Malak, then went to Korriban to unite the Sith against the Republic. I was led to believe that Revan saved the Jedi and the Republic. Interesting. So are we are we recalling the events of the first game right now? Because it looks to be that our character is going, Oh, I heard that this happened. And there's two options. Or well, two options about it. Like, I couldn't care less about Revan's fate, but it specifically is like, I heard that Revan defeated Malak, but then united the Sith against the Republic, and then led to believe that Revan saved the Jedi and the Republic, which I think is talking about the end of the first game. So we'd go with number two. I guess. There's rumors all over space about it. 
All I heard was Revan returned to pay Malak back for trying to kill her in the first place. You know women. Huh? Revan returned to pay Malak back for trying to kill her. What? How long have you been in that cage? Revan was a man, not a woman. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just hoped Revan was a woman. Oh. Interesting. I feel like this is... This is really weird. It feels like it's almost like trying to set the story straight with what happened from the first game. It's really weird. It feels odd. But I think that's the intention. I had some more questions for you. Look, no offense or anything, but your weird half-naked interrogation isn't my idea. Hey, wait a minute. You're that Jedi the miners were talking about. Where is everybody? Uh, I don't know. The facility seems abandoned. Well, the miners can't all be gone. But if they are... Look, hey, let me out and I can help you. I can. I've gotten out of trouble countless times. Okay. Persuade, tell me your plan, then we can go from there. This facility isn't a military installation, which means we may have a chance. You shut down the cell security field and I can reroute the emergency system so we can get to the hangars. We grab a ship and then we fly out of here. Okay. Uh, one thing first. The patients in the medical bay were, were killed with a lethal dose of sedatives. Know anything about that? Huh? What are you talking about? Wanted to know if you knew anything, and you don't. So you done interrogating me, or are we going to work together and try to get out of this mess? Okay. Big words from inside a cage. <laughs> Um, okay. Alright, I'll, I'll go with number three. I'll do the kind option. I'll trust you, and if we work together, we may be able to get out of this mess. Great. Now to business. Let's get to the command console. Hopefully I can get some clothes. Alright, let's go. All right, here we are. Now this console is set on automatic hail. You may have heard it when you came in. The asteroid drift charts are constantly being updated, so it sends out a transmission to incoming vessels so they don't get crushed into space dust. The hail warns them to keep their distance until orbital drift charts are transmitted, and then provides docking instructions to incoming ships, usually freighters. Thing is, you can bounce that same transmission back to the comm here, and suddenly you've got access to the communication system from the inside. Pure Pazak, the console's <laughs> ours. Now, all we need to do is reactivate the turbo lifts, cancel the emergency lockdown, and- Hey! Sounds like you're about to tell me something I don't want to hear. This system's been severed from the main hub, after it was locked down from remote. You can't even reroute the system, it's been cut clean. Repair? That wouldn't be standard procedure in an emergency lockdown? No. Someone tried to lock down this whole level tight, and leave us here. Trapped. Is there anything else we can do with this console? I doubt it. All we have is communications back. For all the good trying to shout in a vacuum will do us. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can try and reach someone on the comm. Be my guest. Not much else we can do. The comm's all yours. Okay. Journal entry added. Let's take a look. So, Galactic History... Uh, Galactic History. You've been out of touch with Galactic events since the Mandalorian Wars. You should try to discover what has happened in the galaxy since your exile. Perhaps Kriya will know more once you have escaped Paragus. Interesting. So that's a way for us to piece together the events, which I think set up, like, the first game. So there isn't, like, a Mass Effect scenario with a Bioware going from Mass Effect 1 to Mass Effect 2, where, it, like, it goes importing a save file or just, like, answering questions or whatever, but it feels similar to that. Obviously, there being a developer switch between Bioware and Obsidian, which is such an interesting concept as well, um, that it's probably not, you know, super, super straightforward. Um, but there you go. So, recent history... Galactic history, okay, and then... Gotcha. So, Atten. Administration computer, let's have a look. Uh, access the comm system. Dormitories. Hangar Bay 25. It sounds as if there's a utility droid on the other end. Is anyone there? Answer me. Is that T3? Is that my boy? 
Uh, do a, diagnos a diagnostic, then follow my instructions. Okay. Uh, we're trapped up on the administration level. Can you unlock the turbo lifts? Okay. Um, is there any other way out of here besides the turbo lifts? Okay. Uh, I'd rather risk it than be trapped up here. <laughs> I like the personality in their voices. So good. Is he opening emergency hatches? Oh, I've just switched. Hang on. Journal entry added. I didn't expect us to switch. Yeah, we are T3. You are trapped on the Paragus administration level and have activated T3 to unlock the emergency hatch to allow you to escape. T3 will need to find a console that ties into Paragus command control and open the emergency hatch by remote. T3 is alive and well. Another broken droid. I would have thought we might have been in here with HK. Oh god. Hello. Uh, check my shock arm. Oh, I don't have the flamethrower. I don't think I have the flamethrower anymore. Damn, that, that blaster was strong. Nice. Um... Do I still have the... Oh no. Because I gave the flamethrower to that other droid. I think I lost it. That's fine. We'll get another one later. It's not like it's super important. The shock arm is what you want anyway. Okay. Foot locker. Okay. So we've got multiple paths that we can take right now. Ooh, that looks interesting. That looks promising. Um, and this is a sealed door. Someone has purposely welded the door shut. You'll need to blast it open with explosives. Okay, I need to get a frag mine. There it is, baby. Has it been repaired? It looks good already. T3 has found the Ebonhawk in Hangar Bay 25. Now it's just a matter of finding a way to get Chris Blythe down to the Hangar Bay. It looks it looks like it's in good shape, so I guess it might have been repaired while uh, like over these past few days. Magnetically sealed. Okay. Hangar Bay door. Can I switch? I can't press tab to switch back to Chris Draco right now. Repair kit. Hangar control. Okay, let's take a look at the hangar control. System diagnostic system damaged. Repair. Several parts have been removed from this console and a laser drill has been used on a number of subsystems. Okay, we can't. We don't have a repair part, so we're gonna have to go and find one. So you need to find some parts to restore this console. Okay, let's go on a journey to, f to repair this console. I like how this game starts. It's actually really cool. Really cool how this game starts. Oh, nice work, T3. You can get it, I believe in you. You can, you can hit him. It's right in front of you. You're both missing each other right now, so that's fine. <laughs> and then you just kill that one from across the room in one hit. Well done, T3. Okay. Environment, underlay, and armor, ply, plating. One. God, uh, so I can... I can switch to filter through some stuff. Uh, I meant to go miscellaneous. Uh, so it's an upgrade item. Stealth plus two and immunity. Okay, that's cool. So we can do that when we get to a workbench, I assume. Okay. 
new area. Components. Hello everyone. I don't want to interrupt. Okay, it's much better with that from a distance. Yeah, much better with the blaster from a distance. Uh, Droid Iron Striker, Sonic Mines, and a data pad for Pragas Depot Survey. Okay. Oh, it opens up a data pad automatically when you pick it up. Good. Purge the fuel lines, and I found three Sonic Chargers attached inside. I checked the work logs, and only droids have been in the area. I tried to contact security as soon as I found the explosives, but I can't seem to get a signal through. I've removed the remote detonators, but I'll keep the explosives on me until I can put them in a secure hold in the hangar. Okay. So can I use that sonic charge to blow open those doors, potentially? Hello, can you go in the, this droid's inventory, please? Thank you. Um, the wrecked droid contains a special droid-based item that, when equipped, allows droids to perform special attacks against opponents. This destroyed droid contains an iron blaster, which is extremely effective against droid opponents and energy shields. It only has a limited number of charges, after which it is destroyed. Uh, so I think that's like something I can chuck. So use is 10 out of 10. Okay, uh, Blast Mark 1, 10 out of 10. 15 points of iron damage, or 20 points. Um, on hit, stun 100% for 12 seconds. And DC 10 to ignore stun. The Scrambler was developed by Aratech and marketed towards customers who were faced with massive droid armies. The Iron Striker is used by security droids to disable or destroy other droids, whether they be assassins or simply malfunctioning. All right, well, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Let's put the... Let's do this one. We'll just equip it. Uh, I can do a motion tracker, awareness plus two, and attack modifier plus one. Droid deflector mark one, put that on as well. Nice, okay. Now, I think with these sonic charges, I might be able to put them on the door in the hangar bay to blow those bad boys wide open. These droids look badass. Ah, okay. And that is why we have the ability. Okay, that's why it's given us the... Okay, just need to make sure I've actually got the right one on. Um, I think I want... Yeah, hang on. Okay, I think we want the yeah, this this one. And then we can use Droid Iron Blast, right? Hang on. There you go. Now it's no longer shielded. Don't attack me, please. Okay, now I want to quickly use a repair kit. So I've taken some damage. Nice. Iron Blast. Nice. And it's been stunned. There you go. Cool! I love that. Take your trashy shields and get the hell out of get the hell out of this mining colony. Okay, now I think we can use our mines on these doors, probably. No? Okay. It says it's a deadly sonic mine, maybe not. Um shit, what am I supposed to do now? Um Oh hang on. Not those ones, I think it's this one. Yes, this one, with the Sonic Mine. There you go. Nice. <gasps> 3C is actually fine! 3C is fine! What happened to the other... Okay. 
this you ah oh, there it is yeah this utility droid looks as if it has suffered a rep uh, irreparable damage HK destroyed 3C on the ship <laughs> droid flame thrower neural band and 43 credits all right we've got the flame thrower now so I can st I actually like the both that I've got so we'll leave that poor droid can we not scavenge anything from his droid corpse? Guess not. All right, foot locker. Let's open this bad boy up. Computer. Ah, there we go. There's our computer spikes. Rest in peace, 3C. Oh, there's one right here. I didn't see. Okay. Where the hell is HK at in this place? He's in this facility somewhere, so we'll have to find him before we get out of here. Alright, hangar control. We can now repair this with the repair parts. So let's repair that bad boy. Functionality restored. Now, access emergency control commands. Run diagnostic on repair systems. Diagnostic running. All emergency subsystems rerouted. Fuel depot terminal. Access to the Pragas emergency subsystems has been rerouted to a fuel depot computer terminal and the connecting circuits have been burned out with a mining laser preventing remote access. The damage cannot be repaired. You need to find the fuel depot terminal to activate the Paragus emergency systems. Okay, let's check status of emergency subsystems. We can now open our blast doors to hangar 25 into the fuel depot, one spike each. Let's do that. Hangar 25. Failure! Hangar 25 door control. Conduit removed. Oh my god. Okay, well let's do the fuel depot. Okay, we can do the fuel depot. Nice. Return to main functions. Okay. Access hangar logs. Docking and takeoff procedures. All incoming and outgoing freighters need orbital drift charts transmitted from Paragus in order to navigate the asteroid field surrounding the mining colony. Transmit asteroid orbital drift charts to the Evanhawk Nava computer. Download error. Access denied. Evanhawk Nava computer locked. God damn it, you can't download the charts to the Ebon Hawk because someone has encrypted the Navi computer. You'll need to find a way to get them on the Ebon Hawk when you are ready for takeoff. Okay. I can't just download them into the droid itself. Ah, if you download the charts now, they will quickly become obsolete. It or it I, I really like how it instantly answered my question. That's very good. Uh, access the hangar logs. Let's have a look. Access 2532512 contraband. A lot of cargo from the Jedi's freighter is being stored in the secure cargo hold until we can pass it through the quarantine checks. And as requested, all the programming spikes the security officers wanted confiscated have been stored there as well to prevent further system compromises. The secure cargo hold should be safe enough. If anybody wants to break into it, they'd have to blow it open with explosives. Sounds like a plan. Okay, maintenance violation. Who ordered the mining droids to repair that Jedi's freighter? Um, I come in here off the work shift and three of them are repairing the port stabilizers? Did I miss something? Is somebody planning a trip? Because orders were that the hangar was to be locked down ever since that Jedi arrived. I don't know what maintenance is up to, but you can't just commission droids for repairs, especially with half the work shifts in medbay. Those droids are needed to repair the ventilation tunnels before gas builds up to terminal levels. It's not like that ship can go anywhere anyway. Even if it had the asteroid orbital drift charts, the Nava computer's been voice locked. You'd need the access code to get it spaceworthy. Considering this latest droid commission breach, I'm putting the droids in this section under the control of the current dock officer. If anyone sends commands to the mining droids outside this terminal, I'll be forced to enact full override. Interesting, the droids fix the ship and the Nava computer is voice locked. Who ordered the mining droids to repair Oops, that Jedi freighter? Did one. I miss something? Is somebody planning a trip? Because orders I, were that I, the hangar was I, to be locked. Just not skip. If any <laughs> uh, Navicomputer lock. Looks like those droids got the vessel working again, even with all the damage it had taken. The maintenance officer still won't admit ordering them to fix it, though. Regardless, still no luck accessing the Navicomputer. It's been voice locked. Maybe by one of the corpses we found on the ship, like the old woman. If so, that ship isn't going anywhere, unless we rip out the Navicomputer and put in a new one, if we even had one to spare. The only reason someone would lock their Nava computer is to hide their astrogation charts. Someone didn't want us to know where that ship was going. Or where it had been. Only smugglers do that. Or someone with something to hide. That Jedi's got a lot of questions to answer. Interesting. Uh, return to main functions. 
Uh, access remote camera controls. Hangar 25. That's my baby. It's all fixed up. Main cargo hold. Nice security cargo room. <laughs> Poor droid. Uh, decontamination area. Okay, and return to main functions. Access the comm system. Run diagnostic on damaged systems. Diagnostic running. Signal unit destroyed. Comm system from hangar inoperative. Okay. Access hangar bay layout. We can do that with one spike. Let's... Do we need the hangar bay layout? I don't know if we need it. I kind of want to save a computer spike uh, so I can go back and to that original terminal by the medical bay. I think we'll be fine. Let's log out. Okay. You've dis discovered the emergency subsystems in Paragus have been rerouted to a computer terminal in the Paragus Fuel Depot. You will need to make your way there in order to access the subsystems and free Clisp uh, Chris Blythe from the administration level. Okay, let's do it. Droid on the job, man. Droid on the job. Oh, we're just going to go right past that guy, apparently. Hang on, let's switch targets. Nice work. Nice work. Look at that double kill. I'm done. Loving this droid shock arm. Nice. Very good at long range. I actually love that T3 is doing stuff and there's like missions that are focused on using him because he was sorely underutilized in the first game in my opinion. So I like I I'm a I'm a fan of doing like some droid based repairing segments. It's cool. Also, these mining droids are actually terrible. <laughs> They're not very accurate. There you go. Ooh, the access, the success of your security skill at, is random. If at first you cannot unlock a container, try again. You might succeed on the second attempt. Cool, because yeah, you're doing a dice roll. Uh, energy rolls, energy shield. All right, to the fuel depot. God, this is actually so awesome. This feels really nice to play. And it's, it's, Good on PC. I'm so glad that we're able to get this working on PC, and it's good to play in in widescreen as well because we obviously played the first one in 4:3 uh, ratio because it was on the original Xbox. Luckily, it was with backwards compatibility, so the the Series X is really good at like uh, obviously up to the resolution and everything like that. So it was great. Uh, we've got the fuel control station, remote cameras, fuel line sensors. All right, so we've got a mine. The fuel line deposits fuel into docked starships. Since no ships are currently docked, it is sealed. There appears to be some sort of metal case lying inside the fuel pipe, but you can't make it out. Okay, we'll need to get that. Maintenance level. Um, that's where we were before. Re uh, entrance to droid maintenance area. There's a droid behind those shields. Sealed by the emergency lockdown, new programming has been introduced to keep it from opening, even if the lockdown is cancelled. There's no way to shut down the field you can see from this terminal. That means anyone inside the facility is effectively cut off from the hangar bay. Okay, main functions. Call up the system log. Within the past day, a series of explosions within the Paragus mining facility has enacted an emergency lockdown. Someone has sliced into the fuel depot computers and created a phantom fuel leak, sealing off the area with force fields to contain the blast. It looks as if someone has been using the lockdown to systema systematically isolate sections of the facility. Okay. Call up emergency system schematics. Emergency system schematics status deactivate. Uh, open emergency hatch on Paragus administration level. Opening. Done. Nice. Okay. System log. Okay. Perfect. We've now opened up the door for Chris Blythe. Communicating. T3 just got cloud cityed. So is that stupid droid of yours going to come through or not? <laughs> Give him a little more time. No more loose wire jokes. Ah, oh, he just got C-3PO on Cloud City. Just, oh no, please, no. 
shit. Uh, it's not my droid. I don't know who he belongs to. Well, I'm beginning to think I was a little better off in my... There you go. Hey, what do you know? A little cargo cylinder came through. <laughs> it does look like it, but it's strange he didn't contact us on the comm. If he got the turbo lifts working, then we should have a clear run to the hangar. The turbo lifts are locked down manually, so I had him open the emergency hatch. Wait, wait, wait. Don't tell me you're taking that hatch down into the mining tunnels. Are you? That explosion I heard came from below. There's probably nothing down there except superheated rock and collapsed blast tunnels. You'd be an idiot to go down there. Maybe, but it's the only way out, and it's better I risk my life than yours. You're either really brave or really crazy. Or both. Alright, I'll try to monitor things from up here. And be careful. The only thing moving down there is likely to be mining droids, so don't be playing hero too hard. Uh, not that I care what <laughs> happens to you or anything. I just don't want to be trying to get off this rock by myself. Got it. See you soon. I'll keep the comm link open. I may be able to guide you through the tunnels from up here. Don't know if the signal will hold if you get too deep, though. Interesting. You've received a comm link. Party members and others may use it to contact you or provide information. Cool. Okay, T3 is damaged. I need some clothes, man. Alright, rescue T3. You lost contact with T3 after he opened the emergency hatch to the administration level. You have no idea what happened. Okay, and T3 has managed to open up a route from the administration level down to the mining tunnels. From there, you'll need to see if there is a way from the tunnels through the fuel depot to the hangar bay. Nice. So, we've got a bunch happening at the moment. Um, we don't have... We've got the computer spikes, though. So... I kind of want to quickly run on back, if we can, because we have to go back down that way anyway. We have to go back down that way anyway, so we can go out this way, and there's a door there, but I'm, we're going to run back because this is the way that we need to go through the emergency hatch that was opened. way from here. Oh, hang on. Did I not go? Hang on. I don't think I went down here. What is this? This has been unexplored on the map. Ah, that's what goes... That's the emergency hatch that takes us through to the Paragus mining tunnels. That's where we want to go. Uh, but we're going to run back and use this computer spike to attempt to trace who administered this, this potential lethal dose to us. So, medical computer. Uh, I think it was the patient treatment. All right, treat injury. Check the last treatment request and then attempt, attempt to track the treatment request. The treatment was administered by remote from another console within the facility, 34103. You cannot determine its location, but you would recognize the ID signature if you accessed the console. So, 34103. It would recognize it if we access the console. Okay, there you go. That gives us some semblance of an idea. With computer use, you discovered the ID signature of the terminal transmitted to the lethal medication order. If you can find the terminal in the facility, you may be able to find out who issued the order. Perfect. Well, there you go. Uh, I wonder if Kriya will have anything to say. Yes. Yes. What have you found? Whoop. Uh, I keep hearing your voice as I explore this place. Ah, yes, I noticed that as well. Uh -huh. It may be that our proximity during our long slumber may have had unforeseen consequences. We did not prepare for unforeseen consequences. Okay, unforeseen consequences. You seem to be able to speak without speaking. Perhaps this effect will pass with time. What if it doesn't pass? Then hope that we have little to say to each other, lest it prove distracting. <laughs> Interesting. And you're just like trying to sleep. It's like, get out of my head, old woman. I'm trying to think about other things. The patients in Midbay were killed. I wonder if we can follow up on that. Uh, okay, no, it's just the same stuff. Indeed. It, it would prove lethal. Okay. Um, three. All right. 
Nothing new, but we do have to explore the mining tunnels now and find out what happens to T3 and still get fixed up on the, uh, fix up the ship and get the hell out of here. It has an interest, there's definitely an interesting start to this game. Uh, it's more shrouded in just like a bit of like mystery and confusion of like, what the hell's going on? And I've been separated from the galaxy for so long since the Mandalorian Wars. Like, what's happening? Uh, and it's really cool to be piecing this together while also exploring a new location. There are like, everything is so familiar yet so new at the same time. Uh, but definitely a nice first impression um, for like, getting started into this game uh it's weird having like uh the ebon hawk and t3 and like these these this connective tissue to the previous game with it being but it being a brand new experience so i definitely enjoying it so far and i hope you guys have enjoyed the first episode of knights of the old republic 2 we will bring this one to a close now as next time we go down into the mining tunnels and we continue navigating the paragus mining facility so we can get the hell out of here thank you so much for joining me i hope you've enjoyed this one and will stick with me through the rest of the playthrough please if you haven't already would love if you could subscribe and uh come hang out and check out some other games on the channel as well. We recently did Knights of the Old Republic 1 uh, and most recently Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. If you're here for Star Wars content, we went through that one as well. Plus there's so much else uh, that you could hang out and, uh, and stay here for. But with that one, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.